thank you very much for for the time and the opportunity to present it uh, in this wonderful uh, wonderful space um such great and amazing works um by using the mtp software and um and so i am here today to share a little bit of our experience and from inel inel escuela tecnica de ingeniería and uh, inel estudios e ingeniería uh, for a particular real study case um focus it or mainly focus it on the um, lightning performance uh, study for a photovoltaic uh, power plant for which we implemented the uh, uh, platform model um, by using by means of the MTP and um, we go forward or, or we uh, validated uh, some design aspects to improve the um, performance in terms of the, of the insulation levels so it it also um, our presentation also has uh, some points in common from the insulation coordination um, my name is luis rodriguez i am electrical engineer uh, from venezuela currently um, a principal system studies engineer of INEL Studios Ingeniería, and I'm also a professor and researcher from Universidad de Zulia, and I'm very happy to be here with you. Okay, so at first, when we uh, look at the um, PV farms or PV power plant systems, um, most of the time we have to consider um some boundaries uh regarding the design and regarding the performance right so in general terms we need to minimize all the installation costs but also uh trying an, an aim to uh, maximize the electrical power production so it, those two aspects has to be um assess it very closely in terms of all different um, uh, variable and performance of, of the system, including especially uh, electromagnetic transient studies. So um, in this case, uh, the main purpose of, of our presentation of, of this uh, report that initially it was uh, performing for a client in Chile uh, was to uh, validate and and see in which cases and where uh, we needed to install such arresters in terms to um, modify the initial or upgrade the initial design in order to comply with the um, insulation level uh, established as a design uh, uh, boundary. So um, for that, we need to uh, provide we need to elaborate an MTP model which accurately represents main components of the of the power system. In this case, we're not interested in the having a look on the electronics aspects of the control system, but in the whole system, like the conductors arrangement, the line lengths, uh, line parameters, um, insulator details, especially because. Um, we need to represent this properly uh, to make sure about um, any, uh, for example, back flashover situation, uh, tower structure and location, and also uh, the grounding representation and the lightning data in the, in the region. So as you may see, uh, this is quite a, a very uh, um, deep model that you have to build in order to have a proper uh, point of view of, of this, of the um, propagation of this phenomena, right? And um, such we such cases, we, we do some uh, criteria, we do some considerations, take into account some conservative aspects in order to uh, simplify some of the main uh, uh, preoccupations and trying to um, get 
more conservative results when possible, since we are talking about um, insulations. Then uh, we have a general methodology from where this, uh, it's based mainly on the, at first, performing the assessment and uh, having a look at the actual um, indicators at the actuals over voltages, a number of <clears throat> backflush over rates, for them uh, implement or propose uh, which mitigation actions uh, are we going to uh, move forward. And uh, as I mentioned it before, it was mainly based in this case, uh, but not limited actually. There are plenty of options that you can improve the performance of transmission, distribution lines, and also uh, in this case associated with the, with the photovoltaic power plant. But uh, uh, since I have pre mentioned it, uh, previously mentioned that we decided to go with uh, such arresters. In general terms, it's a um, nine MBA uh, power plant, which is interconnected to a 23 kilovolts distribution network. Um, we see uh, some um, picture of, of, of the project of the photovoltaic plant. And we can also note that it consists of three power transformer units uh, for which uh, we were uh, looking very closely the over voltage transferred to this transformer units as the main focus of the of the study. And also we can we can see that uh, the system by nature and, and by their characteristics, they have some transition about the um, overhead line and um, underground uh, cable re regarding the plan itself. And then we can also note that the length of the overhead line, it's relatively um, more or less um, short, right? Less than one kilometer. Okay. For that, we needed to uh, take into account some aspects about the um, ground flash density uh, along the overhead line. Uh, actually, Geronic levels mapped for Chile are updated in, in general terms, and we needed to have a look at some other uh, sources of information, like the worldwide lighting location and uh, some other reports where the, um, we can see in, on, the, on the right, this, this figure, uh, all the um, ground flash density uh, along the Chile, which is divided on by thin regions. Uh, the more uh, regarding or according to this uh, information, the higher value is 10 flashes per kilometer square kilometer per year. Uh, but in the particular location of the of the project, we were in the range of 0.56 and 1.8. In that case, uh, we took the um, a higher uh, limit of the interval to make sure that we will be covering on the more conservative aspects. And uh, this information is very important because um, it can uh, also, by, by means of, of different um, formulas and according to different standards as the um, IEEE 1410, uh, translate this information in terms of the real um, back to shopper rates with the help of simulations. So this is some kind of, of information that we really need. And in the um, general cases, more than this, uh, it would be better and we, it would be great if we, could, if we could have real statistic data of the, of the region, right? So. There are some general aspects about the um, phenomena itself. Uh, lightning is quite uh, very 
unusual of phenomena to study, not just in terms of the magnitude, but also in terms of the frequencies that uh, might be involved. And so from um, talking a little bit of the state of the art from, from some long time, actually, there are several waveform, standard waveform, and also uh, is the opportunity to mention the Seagram uh, waveform that is available on the on the ATP. Um, and uh, according to that, and also some uh, standards and uh, of IEEE standards, Seagram standard, uh, standard reports, uh, we can have a relationship about um, probabilities, okay, to for these magnitudes to be exceeded. And somehow you can, um, despite doing a deterministic study, still take into account some um, uh, random behavior of the, of the lining in terms of the relationship of the probability of this current to be exceeded in, in terms of the, of the waveform. Then when you put all these pieces together, um, you have something more or less like this. Uh, you, in this case, since the um, line was relate, relatively short, we managed without any problem to model each uh, line span, uh, not necessarily for doing a uh, line in performance, uh, you will have to do that uh, in all cases, uh, because normally you can extend the the line behavior, okay, to avoid um, uh, mathematical reflections uh, by means of characteristic impedances in terms of the pot um, pot um, extremes of the of the of the line. But since the line was uh, short, we managed to elaborate a complete model and that uh, gave us the opportunity to see uh, which was the impact of the lightning strikes on the different points all along this uh, trajectory. But still, uh, as you may uh, think, it is actually uh, the main uh, or, or the most sensitive point when, when, you, when you try to perform this in terms of the substation, in terms of the photovoltaic plant, is uh, are about the first line spawn, and, and that is why you see in this uh, refreshing figure that the lightning strike is is hitting the the first structure B one, for example. Then we have uh, some uh, photovoltaic model uh, represent representation, as I mentioned before without taking into account the electronics and control system, but um, taking into account the important thing for this kind of study, which is the distances uh, between equipment, okay? Uh, you may notice actually that since uh, we are doing a high frequency airband uh, study, it is really important to take into account the capacitance of, of different, um, of different elements, especially the transformer itself. So you see that we added a capacity uh, a pi model uh, or something um, or some or some topology to represent uh, capacitance between windings to ground and between windings, which is the main aspect. Some other uh, elements of the substation has been. Um, Simplified graphically in terms of the grouping uh, models, for which for which you can uh, take into account different elements like um, uh, DCs, um, uh, potential transformer, current transformers, um, pushing uh, capacitance regarding to the pushing of different equipment, uh, the bus bar itself, um, and so on. This is the the part uh, more. Um, Critical actually, uh, after you manage to elaborate properly the model of the line, to take um, to take care uh, of, of being able to represent it properly. For that, uh, we are using uh, this is 
kind of new um, line cable data from ATP from a few versions, actually. But uh, for all these um, AMTP classic users, uh, you may know and you're aware that this is a completely new um, subroutine that managed to represent in a more consistent, in a more um, detailed form, uh, the nature of, of different kind of, of, of arrangement. Uh, some some important uh, improvement has been made to these subroutines. And so we are working with uh, with this one, which uh, we can from which we can represent of the design aspects of the not just in terms of the geometry, but also in terms of the electrical intrinsic characteristic of the of the materials. The same thing uh, goes by the cable system. Okay, uh, we can also take into account not just the conductor itself, but also you can take into account the um, wire screen and, and to see, for example, um, inductive coupling that, that you may have uh, regarding some search or over voltage transfer uh, from the core cables to the uh, wire screen. And, and also, for example, have a look about, about which is the impact on the on the insulation, and um, since normally the distances between phases and on cable system are very very uh, close, if you compare it with the um, overhead line, uh, some some interesting um, uh, some interest things happens on the on this kind of installation, and the MTP now is able to take into account uh, in general terms the proximity effect, which is something that um, classic uh, subroutines uh, were not able to to represent in the case of the of the structure of the down conductors we we are also actually uh, representing the down conductors uh, by means of an inductance okay um according to the length and the characteristic of the of the cable regarding the the structure and um, in that way, we are we, we are able to uh, represent properly uh, the behavior of the over voltage propagation uh, between the uh, the more um, the top of the of the structure to the grounding system. You may also notice that the grounding is represented as a purely resistive. This is um, if we are going to to see this in a more strict way, uh, you can also use a um, distributed model or a frequency dependent model. But you you may might uh, think and um, take into consideration that resistive model it's the more uh, conservative um, in terms of the main variables that we are uh, addressing here. So the, the main intention was, of course, giving uh, proper detail of the of the models, but also simplifying some uh, uh, important things uh, in order to gain um, conservative uh, margin uh, regarding this uh, design. Okay, we can also uh, have a look at a different um, search arrester. Um, characteristic there are different ways of, of representing this on the of the NTP uh, you can also use um, frequency dependent Adjibli, Pinceri, Fernandez uh, models uh, which are based on two slopes of two characteristic uh, better say two two different characteristic and there's a whole network that represents the behavior, the inductive and, and capacitive behavior of the of the such arrester. But we, in the in the same order of idea, we decided to go um, conservative with the such arrester. And when you compare the um, uh, exponential model, okay, which is the true nonlinear, and and when you uh, compare it with the pseudo nonlinear model, which is the one I'm, I'm presenting to you, which is the piecewise uh, function. Uh, this one is more conservative in terms of the energy uh, dissipation, which was uh, something that um, 
needed to be properly assessed in, in order to, to establish the final design. And you can also notice that uh, manufacturers normally gave a couple of points, uh, let's say the eight per 20 microsecond benchmark from five kilo ampere to 14. And uh, that does not represent uh, all the, the behavior of the search arrester, especially if we are looking for, for a phenomena from a wide spectrum of frequencies. So we did use some uh, curve fitting to adjust a um, more complete curve uh, to match this point gave, given by the manufacturer. So this is something uh, very important where, to take into account where you are a modeling search arrester because there are two different uh, point of view. When you are looking for the pseudo nonlinear, the more points you have, it's a better for, for the model. But instead, if you were, for example, uh, going forward with the um, true nonlinear, uh, the more points you have, it's more uh, probably that you will have some problems about the um, Newton uh, sub uh, mathematical method that performs the core fitting because you you may notice actually this other model has the um, uh, exponential different exponential to represent of this region but um in in different cases we have been proving that this model is more conservative and so it is within our uh, best practice in these cases to to use this model and also the lightning strike um you can see it's um, hidden be between a cloud, so it's just graphically, but uh, it really is a current source secret, current source in parallel with um, search impedance. This search impedance is representing the the discharge itself, so um, uh, it is a recommended value to, to represent the the nature of the of of, of this phenomena. Uh, regarding this um, waveform, we were having a complete uh, parametric analysis from uh, 10 kiloamperes up to one, uh, 114 kiloamperes to having a look at these different amplitudes and their impacts. Um, there is a um, recommendation of the IEC standard, the part four of the insulation coordination uh, reports, which gives the guidelines for representation and modeling of, of when calculating transient of at different um, different frequencies and there is a relationship about these currents and the front time for which we can uh, take into account uh, for the total time we have set it to uh, a fixed value because this parameter does not have influence of the maximum upper voltage but it's a conservative value in terms of the energy dissipation. So it was of our best interest to make sure uh, about, about this thing. So uh, at first and after we we have a appropriate model in terms of this uh, real case, we managed to um, perform the, the first uh, scenarios. Actually, there are plenty of scenarios uh, where I am just showing the two cases, for example, the impact on the structure and the, in, the, in the middle of the line spawn uh, of the first line spawn. But uh, in, in our study, we did a complete um, uh, exhaustive analysis of all cases. These two, of course, are ones of uh, more interesting to, to share. And it's the reason why we are talking uh, about this case. Something very important to, to take into account when, when we are talking about the lining over voltage assessment, if of course the insulation levels. Um, regarding the, the transformer and according to their, um, uh, to their design criteria, um, of course, this is also uh, is a result of the general terms of the insulation coordination but was previously performed um, in the analytic way 
and not just by means of the of the simulation. So this is this is a great opportunity to share with you the importance of the performing the insulation coordination with the representative over voltage that we can um, calculate with powerful software like NDP. So we were we were um, seeing that the insulation level that uh, the engineering was considering for the transformer and according for the different scenarios that the currents that, that we were uh, having a look, it, it was um, possible for these over voltages to exceed the insulation level. And so we needed to, to do something about uh, regarding the, the design. We can also have a look on the energy dissipation for all phases and uh, and regarding the different uh, lining currents that, that we were addressing. So that way we um, address it, this uh, situation, uh, adding or, or, or considering additional such arrester in very particular uh, points, of course, on the transformers, but also on the transition, uh, overhead uh, on the ground transition to make sure that, um, uh, that the transformer units itself uh, will be properly protected at, regarding the, the analysis. And so we have the representation now of these additional search arresters, and we managed to perform the studies again and see that for this, regarding the, the new design, the new consideration, we were able to comply with this um, insulation level uh, for currents up to 52 kiloampert with half the probability of 20 percentage to be exceeded. This is something very interesting to be discussed. I'm pretty sure that um, regarding design criteria, uh, there are different point of view, there are different um, uh, considerations to take into account, but for the terms of the project and, and the terms of the economical impact and the probability uh, of, of this to be, um, to be presented properly, uh, it was necessary uh, as a requirement to use this uh, probability as a reference uh, regarding the, the model. So it's clear, it's clearly, we can see clearly the um, improvement of the lightning performance uh, between these two conditions uh, without the mitigation actions and after uh, we, we perform uh, these uh, mitigation actions. Finally, some conclusion and recommendations. Um, at first, I have been mentioning uh, all along the, the presentation that it is necessary uh, to have real statistical records of lightning strikes near all this equipment, this influence on, um, but the data that we were using, we know that in, in worst case scenario, we were doing uh, using higher levels uh, regarding the, this data, which is not uh, available, is not readily uh, available. Uh, we can also, uh, with this particular study case, uh, has been proven that um, this direct lightning strike, uh, which some particular magnitude does not exceed the, the insulation level of the transformers, and um, this is something I have just uh, discussed a few a few moments uh, before, and um, also makes me wonder and, and makes me think uh, about some other of, of the points uh, over here, which is the importance of the topology of the substation, because uh, we do think that the the value of of our contribution to the to the conference is that. Uh, normally, when when you are thinking about designs, uh, you can have some uh, different topologies. Let's say A, B, C, or D, 
and these different topologies as a general uh, aspect can be applied different um, regions of course with the uh, particular data and information as the ground flush density and, and some other important things of course but these uh these different topologies will perform in a very similar way so this behavior for the topology that we were uh, studying and analyzing uh, will keep their their um, behavior in terms of the sensibilities of course of some other uh, variables so this being said design has not to be performed for a particular project but for particular topologies to be validated to make sure actually even uh, which longitudes uh, which length uh, we uh, take or we consider that the equipment is uh, properly protected in terms of the dissipation of the upper voltages and this is very very interesting and I, and I see uh, room for for development for for I see room for um uh working in the in in this kind of of aspects and also some recommendation uh, that we can uh, also say is to perform Monte Carlo simulation in order to improve certainty of this uh, uncertainty of this uh, phenomena under study because uh, despite we were doing um some considering some statistical uh, information of course for the uh, ground flash density for the um, uh, lining mining to the probability to be exceeded and some other important things uh, a more uh, exhaustive uh, uh, study will take into account uh, Monte Carlo simulation okay so that's uh, everything I have to share with you um, uh, today I don't know if, if if you have may have any questions that that you would like to share with me <laughs> 